for everyone. Thank you very much for joining us for today's BSC talk. During BSC talks, we not only share ideas and experience, but also practice public speaking skills and inspire others with our stories. We are very lucky today to be joined by Leonie Alte Hülshorst, who is currently doing her bachelor double degree in French and German universities. She has experience of living, studying and working in both countries. Today, she will share her understanding of intercultural communication and the importance of it with being a part of international team. Soon we will find out how people from different cultural backgrounds interact with each other in specific situations and how their culture influences their reactions. Let's learn what are the potential communication problems and the methods to avoid them. Leonie, thank you very much for being here today. Please begin whenever you are ready. Thank you very much, Marina. I hope everyone can see my screen now. So hello everyone and welcome to my presentation about challenges in Franco-German cooperation. Before I start, I wanted to explain why I chose the subject. Marina already told you that I am a bachelor student in Germany and as I am in my last semester, I have to write a bachelor thesis. I decided to write about intercultural communication in French-German teams working together in the same company. And the presentation is for me also an introduction into the topic before I start writing my paper in May. So first of all, what is intercultural communication? There are numerous definitions of intercultural communication. Intercultural communication is an interpersonal communication between individuals or groups from different cultural backgrounds. One of the characteristics is the fact that at least one of the participants uses another language to communicate than the mother tongue. But what exactly is culture? According to Edward Bernard Taylor, an English anthropologist, Culture is defined as a complex whole, which includes knowledge, belief, art, morals, law, custom, and any other capabilities and habits acquired by a human as a member of society. Culture is learned through the socialization, the beliefs, the values, the traditions. It is also shared because all of us are living as members of groups. Cultures are dynamic as they shift and change over time, and they are also individual, which means that cultural elements vary from person to person. One of my favorite models to explain what culture is, is the iceberg model. Culture is often compared to an iceberg, which has both visible and invisible parts. Elements of culture which we can plainly see, such as food or clothes, are represented by the upper part, and the elements which are not that obvious, such as communication conventions, beliefs, or traditions, they are represented by the much larger part of the iceberg under the water. In order to communicate successfully in an intercultural situation, it is therefore important to recognize both sides of the iceberg. So why is it important to talk about intercultural communication? Due to globalization, transportation and technological advances, intercultural communication becomes more and more important and we need to learn how to adapt to unfamiliar situations and to contribute in a constructive, peaceful manner. Intercultural communication can also lead to misunderstandings because situations can be perceived and analyzed differently through cultural inference. I am coming now to the main topic of my presentation, French and German cooperation. Germany and France are important trading partners and they are also the motor of the European Union. The challenge of Franco-German cooperation sometimes lies in the underestimation of their cultural differences as they are neighbors. The differences in each partner's mentality and work methods 
are often in ignored, which sometimes causes situations called critical incidents due to misinterpretation by either of the participants. And in fact, both countries have different value systems, different sense-making frames, different social forms, and also different programmed reactions in specific situations or problems. Here are some of the Franco-German companies or institutions. We have the Franco-German Youth Office, which organizes numerous exchange programs for young people. The Franco-German University, which has a huge network of French-German study programs. The German Historical Institute Paris. The Joint TV Channel Arte and the Franco-German Cultural Council. There is also the European Aeronautic Defense and Space Company, also known by the name Airbus. The Franco-German cooperation is intensified by a civil society network of some 300 Franco-German societies, around 20 regional partnerships, and around 2,000 town training arrangements, some 4,000 school partnerships, and around 40 partnerships between German and French schools with bilingual sections. The next question is, how are Germans perceived by French during business negotiations? French people often say that Germans are reserved, they are disciplined, cold, arrogant, punctual, task-oriented, direct and inflexible, whereas French people are perceived as unpunctual, unreliable, chaotic, they often beat around the bush. They are sensible and they have a lot of ambition. These images are often oversimplified and fixed and they are called stereotypes, sometimes even prejudice. Stereotypes are based on cultural standards which determine the behavior of people within the cultural group, but individuals can of course diverge signific significantly from these standards. Now, I am going to talk about some typical differences between the German and French working style. First of all, the understanding of management varies from country to country. In Germany, managers often follow the concept of partnership, which means that the team manager is rather seen as the moderator. The role of the head in the German organization is to define the structures, to ensure the resources, to supervise it as a whole, and remain available in case of specific problems. The hierarchy is flat, and within the team, there are subdivisions with clear tasks. Also, this is called the delegation principle, which means that everyone works independently and takes responsibility, and the decision-making process is often based on consensus. In France, the concept of central power is quite common. So the team leader is the motor who defines goals and strategy. He also delegates the tasks among the team and motivates the employees. The team leader also makes the decisions and has the responsibility. And this is why French management organizations often compare it to a human pyramid. As a result, French working in a German team sometimes say that there's not enough delegation and the goals are uncertain, whereas Germans working on a French team think that the work is too much controlled by their supervisor. There is also a difference concerning the time planning. The time management represents a second major problem in French-German cooperation. French people often complain about the rigidity and the lack of reactivity of Germans, and the Germans complain about the French lack of punctuality, the constant interplay between private and professional discussions, and also about the non-structured nature of their working day. Punctuality plays a major role in the German working day. For them, it is important to have a detailed time planning in order to adhere to the deadlines, and this system is also called a monochromic system, which means that one task is performed after the other. In France, a laissez-faire attitude to punctuality can be sometimes identified, and uh, French are said to be masters of improvising, and appointments can also be spontaneous. The system, the French system, is sometimes also called a polychromic system, which means that several tasks can be performed at the same time, and the focus does not lie on the time. Therefore, French are more flexible and more tolerant. 
But I think in general, French and German managers seem to share still the same concept of time management. But however, critical incidents relating to punctuality are still common in Franco-German interactions. Critical incidents can also appear in meetings. A typical German meeting is structured with an agenda, and the participants are prepared before they go there. German can be considered as well as the master of planning. Decisions are made after the exchange of information, and a typical French meeting is often a bit less structured, and it is rather used as an exchange of opinions and for the development of personal relationships than for decision making. In terms of communication, both countries have their own communication conventions and different understandings of feedback. In Germany, communication and feedback are mostly objective, task-related and direct, which is why French people sometimes feel offended when they get feedback from a German colleague. The feedback is understood as criticism and is sometimes taken person personally, even though this was not the attention of the German colleague. French communication is more personal and more indirect, as personal relationships are important in communication and negotiation. But people from different cultures encode and decode messages often differently, which increases the chances of misunderstanding. So the question now is, how can these critical incidents be avoided? I once had an intercultural training in which we talked about cultural spectacles. Every one of us has cultural spectacles because of our socialization, and sometimes it is important to take them off in order to see the world from another point of view, and also in order to learn more about other cultures. It is also important to be aware of cultural differences in order to have more effective communication. To have an open mind to other views and ways of thinking is also really helpful. And uh, especially for international companies, there are special intercultural trainings for the employees to improve their cultural awareness or to prepare people who are planning to go to another country. There is also a possibility to have intercultural mediators in international teams to make sure that misunderstandings in negotiations will be avoided. It is also important to remember that people are rarely intentionally rude, but sometimes it is also because of the lack of language competence that one cannot express oneself as intended. Everything that can be said in one language cannot be said in another because sometimes meanings are not directly translatable. So as you can see, intercultural communication can sometimes lead to misunderstandings, but on the other hand, it makes it also possible to learn about other cultures and to broaden the range of perspectives. And now I'm already at the end of my presentation, so thank you very much for your attention. And if you have some questions, please do not hesitate to ask them. Or if you want to share some insights of your own culture, that would be also really interesting for me. Thank you very much.